Oh yeah, let's learn English with Neymar Jr. and Will Smith. In this lesson, you will learn lots of English vocabulary and pronunciation with Neymar Jr., Will Smith and Samuel L. Jackson. Now we know that Neymar Jr. is not a native English speaker and you'll probably realise whilst watching this lesson that you actually speak better than him. However, it's a good reminder that everyone is at a different stage of their language learning. In case you're new here, we want to let you know that every week we make lessons just like this one to help you learn fast English without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Just like Elkin who says that he was able to get a job by improving his English speaking with our channel. So if that sounds good to you, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. Me and Neymar, we've been trying to meet for like almost 10 years really. Hey, what's up y'all? Hey, and we had like, four or five near misses. So this is like the first time we're, we're actually gonna meet, but he thinks uh, a, a famous chef is coming and I can't cook. Finally! <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've been trying to meet for about 10 years. This is our first <laughs> meeting and we made it happen. Alpha followed your career for a long time, so. I fun. followed it too. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done any acting? Fees, fees, there's no triple wax. Oh, yeah. that's right, yeah, 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 yeah. Wax, Did wax. you like it? I like it, I like it, love it. What for film reminds you fees, I think? Oh, Ali, the, the, the movie about Muhammad Ali. Ali life, it was a, a year and a half. For training. Of training, yeah, a <laughs> oh. year and a half of training with professional fighters and all of that. And see, I'm an actor, so I, don't, I didn't, <laughs> but, yeah, I was, I thought I was gonna <laughs> act like I was getting punched in my face. I, did, I didn't realize I was actually gonna get punched in, in my face in training. A dialect, having to talk like Ali, and then having to, to box like Ali. Nothing in my career has come close to being as hard as uh, Ali. Oh yeah, Pursuit of Happiness, yeah, yeah with my son. Yeah, yeah that, that was beautiful also, just to be able to do it with my son. Yeah. You know, being able to, to uh, sit there, that, that father and son bond doing what we do, well, you know, you know about yeah. that, you know. What advice would you give me in, in terms of dealing with Jaden, with my son who's coming up now? I think never lose the essence that your te family te passes, what your father passed. And always be sincere, honest, happy. I think these are the most important things. Me and Neymar, we've been trying to meet for like almost 10 years really. Hey, what's up y'all? Hey, and we had like four or five near misses. If you say what's up to someone, you could be asking them what is going on or what is wrong because you notice that something isn't quite right. Example, hey, you seem sad, what's up? Usually, and as it is in this case, we use this as an informal greeting. It's like saying, hi, how are you? Hey, Raj. Hey, guys, what's up? We just wanted to invite you out to dinner tonight. And we had like four or five near misses. A near miss is most commonly used to express an unplanned event that has the potential to cause, but does not actually result in human injury. Example, he had a near miss at work. However, here, Will Smith uses it to explain an attempt of something that is almost successful. He's saying that they have tried to meet on multiple occasions, but it ended up not being possible. So this is like the first time we're, we're actually going to meet, but he thinks uh, a, a famous chef is coming. The word actually has a few different meanings depending on how we say it. In this case, Will says, we're actually going to meet because this time, as opposed to the previous times, it's a reality or fact that they'll meet. Hey, I'm ready when you are. Oh, okay, no. I can't believe you guys are actually getting tattoos. <laughs> so this is like the first time we're, we're actually gonna meet, but he thinks uh, 
a, a famous chef is coming. Did you notice the way he said, we're going to meet? This is a clear case of connected speech. Normally, we link the expression going to, so it is reduced to gonna. Well, well, hey, well, where, where are you going? Boss, I'm not going to run away again. I just want to get a little fresh air. But he thinks uh, a, a famous chef is coming. And I can't cook. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've been trying to meet for about 10 years. Here, about means approximately. We can use this to refer to different types of quantities. For example, how much did you spend in the store? About $20. Or it can be used to describe time. So you want to tell us now or are we waiting for four wet bridesmaids? <laughs> oh God, well, it started about a half hour before the wedding. We also commonly use around for this. Maybe we'll be seeing each other at dinner tomorrow night, say around eight o'clock. This is our first <laughs> meeting and we made it happen. And it's a surprise, he didn't even know. <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <a> big surprise. <laughs> I've uh, followed your career for a long time, so. I follow you too. <laughs> Even though the most common use of the word follow is to go, walk or drive behind or after someone else, it also could be used to describe when you're interested in something or someone and in the way it or they develop. So, Will Smith is saying that he has been interested in Neymar's football career for a long time. And in the same way, Neymar has been interested in Will Smith's acting career. What was the film most difficult? Oh, Ali. The, the, the movie about Muhammad Ali. Ali. Muhammad Ali is a famous boxer, and Will Smith portrayed him in the movie Ali. In order to successfully play Ali, Will Smith trained as a boxer for a year and a half. Do you want to master how natives really speak? Then I highly recommend our Fluent with Friends course. In this 48-week course, you will learn with the first two seasons of Friends you'll receive PDF power lessons every week, vocabulary memorization software, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. And did you know that you could try it right now for free with our three-part masterclass? All you have to do is click up here or in the description box below to learn more and sign up now. We hope to see you there. Life, it was a... Uh a year and a half for training. of training, yeah, a year and a half of training with professional fighters and all of that. And see, I'm an actor, so I don't, I didn't. An actor is someone who performs in a play or a film, and the expression see could be used figuratively to try to make someone understand something. So when saying, see, I'm an actor, he's trying to make a point. He was acting in the film as a fighter, so he didn't expect that the professional fighters were actually going to hit him in the face. As he explains here. Yeah, I, was, I thought I was going to act like I was getting punched in my face. I, did, I didn't realize I was actually going to get punched in my face in training. The word punch has multiple meanings. It could mean to make a hole in something using a metal tool or a sharp object. When talking about machines, to punch could be to push a button or key. But in this case, he's talking about fighting and this is the most common way to use it. So it means to hit someone or something hard with your fist. A dialect, having to talk like Ali, and then having to, to box like Ali. Dialect is a form of a language which is spoken only in one area, with words or grammar that are slightly different from other forms of the same language. Example, in this region, the dialect sounds a lot like German. I want to be in your corner. What'd you say your name is? Bundini. Rhymes with Houdini, yeah, except that don't rhyme. So what? So what? I ain't got to be what nobody else want me to be, and I ain't afraid to be what I want to be. Nothing in my career has come close to being as hard as uh, Ali. Oh yeah, Pursuit of Happiness, yeah, with my son. Yeah, that, that was beautiful also, just to be able to do it with my son. Be able to is the phrase we use when we can't use can. Can is a modal verb that you use in the present tense. In the past tense, it's could. For many other conjugations, you need to use be able to. For example, you can't say, I will can to do it. 
So instead you say, I will be able to do it. Similarly, you can't say, just to can do it with my son. So Will Smith says, just to be able to do it with my son. Check how be able to is conjugated in different ways here. I'm not going to be able to do that for so long. And it's so much fun. So I want a new champion. Amy, were you serious about being able to serve? Oh, it's, it's been a long time. I... Uh, being able to, to uh, sit there, that, that father and son bond doing what we do. Well, you, know, you know about that. You know is an expression being used as a filler in an informal conversation. In a literal way, it's used to check if the listener is understanding or if he or she knows what is being referred to. Well, you know, you're so much better off, you know, you just go from guy to guy, having fun. And you should know that uh, you're my best friend, you know, probably the best friend I'm ever going to have. You know, being able to, to uh, sit there, that, that father and son bond. As a verb, to bond means to develop a close relationship between two or more people. So filming a movie with his son made Will Smith closer to him. Let's see an example of this word being used. You know what you should do? Hmm. You, you should find out what his hobbies are and then use that to bond with him. So for you, was it like harder for you? A pressão a gente leva até hoje, né? Still really, é, really. é, junto com, com a família, mas é, meu pai é um cara que me ajudou muito, né? Eu sinto muito orgulho disso. What advice would you give me in, in terms of dealing with Jaden, with my son who's coming up now? So, Will is asking Neymar for advice. In other words, he is asking for an opinion or a recommendation. Now, I know it's probably not my place, but can I give you a piece of advice? Yes. I think you should talk to Ross about all this. What advice would you give me in, in terms of dealing with Jaden, with my son? In terms of is a collocation used to talk about something only in relation to a specific fact or event. In this case, in relation to the fact of dealing with Jaden. Okay, now, uh, in terms of the invite list, obviously I got you, me, and Chandler. What advice would you give me in, in terms of dealing with Jaden, with my son, who's coming up now? If you deal with someone or something, it means you need to handle a specific situation. In this case, his son, who's growing up exposed to fame. Walk away! It's tough enough to deal with Cam when I'm at full strength, but I have been fasting just as long as he has, and I do not have the energy. I think nunca perder a, a essência que que a sua família te te passa, o que teu pai te passou. E buscar sempre ser sincero, honesto, feliz. Eu acho que são as coisas mais importantes. Do you feel safer today than you felt yesterday? I know I don't. The biggest, most expensive military in the world, and we're still scared of shoe and tighty whitey bombs at the airport. Why is that? Because soldiers are built to take orders and fight wars. But we, my friend, are not at war. We are at peril. That's why Triple X. What's the matter? You on a diet? You ain't hungry? São sete e meia da manhã. So? It's lunch or dinner time somewhere in the world. Come on, eat up. You know who does feel safe? The men in charge. The world beaters. The top shelf par excellence ayatollahs with all the dollars. And that's because those righteous bastards somewhere along the way made a deal with the devil. They traded liberty for safety. And us, we the people, ended up losing both. That's why Triple X. While everybody else is stuck on the ground, we're doing shit on the board nobody's ever even seen before. Oh, that's my pitch. <laughs> Always was a bit of spy than a salesman. So, what do you say? Eu não sou herói, sou jogador de futebol. My bad. So I'll leave you be then. <sighs> Who said there's no such thing as a free meal? <laughs> Give 
say you're no hero. I gotta call bullshit on that. You're exactly the kind of hero the world needs. Do you feel safer today than you felt yesterday? I know I don't. The biggest, most expensive military in the world, and we're still scared of shoe and tidy whitey bombs at the airport. Here, Samuel Jackson says they're still scared about shoe and tighty whitey bombs. He's making a reference to two famous cases about bombing attempts. In one of them, a person had explosives hidden in his underwear. In the other case, someone had explosives packed into the shoes he was wearing. As a consequence of this, at airports, it's common for people to have their shoes examined by security. Why is that? Because soldiers are built to take orders and fight wars. But we, my friend, are not at war. We are at peril. If someone is at peril, it means that he or she is in serious and immediate danger. Similarly, we use the adjective for this, perilous. Example, the economy is in a perilous state. That's why, Triple X. What's the matter? You on a diet? You ain't hungry? Here we have another common example of connected speech. In words like matter, the T sound is pronounced as a soft D. So instead of saying matter, Americans say matter. Let's watch some examples of this connected speech pattern. What's the matter? I, I, I don't know, I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> you know who does feel safe? The men in charge. The world beaters, the top shelf par excellence ayatollahs with all the dollars. In this scene, Samuel Jackson is trying to emphasize his point by using a lot of expressions to refer to the same thing. He is making reference to the highest levels of government. Let's listen again to analyze what he says. The men in charge, the world beaters, the top shelf par excellence ayatollahs with all the dollars. If you are in charge of a particular situation, you are the most responsible person and have control over something or someone. Look, Kay, I think I should be in charge of the flashy memory thing department. Not while I'm around, Dice. Let's see these expressions one by one so we can understand the references. The men in charge, the world beaters, the top shelf par excellence ayatollahs with all the dollars. If you describe a person or thing as a world beater, you mean that they are better than most other people or things of their kind. A shelf is, literally, a flat length of wood attached to a wall or forming part of a piece of furniture that provides a surface for the display of objects. However, here he is using this as a reference to the best or people of the highest standard. The top shelf par excellence ayatollahs with all the dollars. Ayatollahs a high-ranking religious leader of the two main branches of Islam. And that's because those righteous bastards somewhere along the way made a deal with the devil. Righteous means believing and showing that you are morally correct. I know you've suffered. Ah! <laughs> Captain America. God's righteous man. Make a deal with the devil is an expression used when someone wants something so badly that he or she is willing to sacrifice something important for it. It's usually a bad idea. Another Englishman with money, power, who supported our cause, and now he dictates our every move. I made a deal with the devil. If you're a fan of Will Smith, then I highly recommend you check out our lesson with him on The Ellen Show. You can click up here or in the description box below to watch it straight after this lesson. That's why, Triple X. While everybody else is stuck on the ground, we're doing shit on the board nobody's ever even seen before. If something is stuck in a particular position, it is unable to move. Ground is the solid surface of the earth. So by saying that they're on the board while everyone else is stuck on the ground, he is saying that they are taking action while everybody else is stuck discussing the situation. Oh, that's my pitch. <laughs> Always was a bit of spying on a salesman. So, what do you say? 
A salesman is a person whose job is to sell things, and a pitch is the speech or presentation they use to attempt to persuade someone to buy or do something. There is a high chance that you've heard a pitch before, since it's a very common practice in the world of politics or business. I will work my ass off and I will make you believe me when I do stuff, even if it's just hair pulling. Well, it's a very nice pitch, very earnest. Thank you. Down on the ground! Now! Give me the money! Don't move! Hurry up! And <laughs> you say you're no hero. I gotta call bullshit on that. You're exactly the kind of hero the world needs. To call bullshit is an informal way to express disagreement with someone. It is a humorous way to say it, but also serious at the same time. Samuel Jackson calls bullshit on Neymar, who said he's not a hero, right before he prevented a robbery. I won't do that. Why would I do something like that? Uh, because he's your best friend. Bullshit. You're my best friend. And Neymar, we've been trying to meet for like almost 10 years really. Hey, what's up y'all? Hey. And we had like four or five near misses. So this is like the first time we're, we're actually gonna meet, but he thinks uh, a, a famous chef is coming and I can't cook. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've been trying to meet for about 10 years. This is our first meeting and we made it happen. Gosto muito do filme da Procura da Felicidade. Oh yeah, Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, yeah with my son. Yeah, yeah, that that was beautiful also just to be able to do it with my son. Yeah. You know, being able to to uh sit there that that father and son bond doing what we do. Well, you know, you know about yeah. that, you know. What advice would you give me in, in terms of dealing with Jaden, with my son who's coming up now? I think nunca perder a, a essência que, que a sua família te, te passa, o que teu pai te passou. E buscar sempre ser sincero, honesto, feliz. Eu acho que são as coisas mais importantes. Do you feel safer today than you felt yesterday? I know I don't. The biggest, most expensive military in the world, and we're still scared of shoe and tidy whitey bombs at the airport. Why is that? Because soldiers are built to take orders and fight wars. But we, my friend, are not at war. We are at peril. That's why, Triple X. What's the matter? You on a diet? You ain't hungry? So, it's lunch or dinner time somewhere in the world. Come on, eat up. You know who does feel safe? The men in charge. The world beaters, the top shelf par excellence ayatollahs with all the dollars. And that's because those righteous bastards somewhere along the way made a deal with the devil. They traded liberty for safety. And us, we the people, ended up losing both. That's why, triple X. While everybody else is stuck on the ground, we're doing shit on the board nobody's ever even seen before. Well, that's my pitch. <laughs> Always was a better spy than a salesman. So, what do you say? Eu não sou herói, sou jogador de futebol. My bad. So I'll leave you be then. <laughs> Who said there's no such thing as a free meal? <laughs> Down on the ground! Now! Give me the money! Don't move! Hurry up! <laughs> and you say you're no hero. I gotta call bullshit on that. You're exactly the kind of hero the world needs. At the end of the day, 
comes down to the same question I've been asking my wife every Friday night for the last 20 years. Do you want some of this? Thanks. That's all we've all got right, time for. All, yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a quick commercial break. And then... <laughs> I will. That what was. Is...